Hey folks and welcome back to the Let's Play Deadly Premonition. I'm your tour guide to Greenville Obscure and we're back outside the police station. Uh, we just finished our delicious lunch uh, courtesy of the lovely and wonderful cook Thomas. And Emily's outside. What's she doing? Let's talk to her. Hi. Town residents are gathering between 1500 and 1700. Don't try to scare them too much. Do not try not to scare them too much. It's kind of a weird Hi. way to phrase it. Do try not to scare them too much. Uh, just doesn't ring, doesn't ring with me, doesn't compute. I just want to check my inventory quickly to recap what I've done for my own benefit. Alright, that's what I need to check. We're good. So we will be going to the meeting this meeting. Me meeting this episode rather. Should be enough done uh, for this episode of Let's Play Deadly Premonition. I do want to cut down the length, but in doing so, increase the amount of episodes released per week. That way, uh, you'll still get roughly the same length, uh, but not as, you know, not being forced to watch such long, uh, tedious videos. Oh, we want the second layer. The directions in Greenbelt are as confusing as ever. Uh, you do take a while to get used to them. And we should be fine. Now, the meeting, like Emily just told us, is at 1500. We do have two hours between now and then. However, we will just choose to get hit by a car. No, we will drive there and wait outside for that 15 minute period, a uh, two hour period rather. One hour and forty-five minutes. If you want to be pedantic about it, and watch as the residents roll in, which is always reasonably entertaining to me. And that way, we also get to see who's coming to the meeting today, what new people, what new exciting residents we have uh, in store within Greenville, and what they drive as well. I mean, we've seen a few people's cars drive around. I think we've seen uh, lollies and. Maybe uh, Emily's as well, and maybe a few others. I can't really recall what I've displayed so far. We can drive here and realize, hey, we're a bit early, just a bit. We haven't been courtesy at the were well, courteously so given. Emily arranged for people to come between the keys, the uh, entrance. We can't do anything here right now. Let's come back at the right time. Now the problem is that I have done reasonably, well, virtually every side quest we can do at this moment, or at least at this given hour. Um, there's nothing left for us to do in the town of Greenvale, really. We could talk to a few people and perhaps go fishing, uh, and uh, a few cards and stuff we could pick up. As well as repeating uh, a few rooms, as you recall, we do have uh, the lumber mill that we can repeat as well. If you do, if you do recall yourself, but we'll go to this lovely menu, and we'll have a cigarette. Uh, York can join me. And we'll stop a bit early. Oops. Okay, not as early as I had hoped. So with that actually done, everyone should be here. There's Emily. I did actually hope to uh, to stop it before everyone arrived. There's uh, Usher's car, nice car. She owns, not too shabby. Olivia, driving this one, nice car. And we've got a suspect, which is, uh, Nick, which I'm guessing that might be his car. Oh, who's this? Watch out, watch out. It's Jack and Gina. I've never actually seen their car before. But, uh, trust them to be driving erratically. Polly, just standing under the rain. Always waiting, Polly. Everyone's waiting. Let's go to the community center, Zach. Well, we can actually enter now, but we'll carry on taking a look. Here's Harry and, uh, Michael. 
Imagine uh, not showing off the meeting on a day like this, just sitting in on the rain. I don't know where the hell Jack and Gina are going. They've, they've driven off. They've left us behind. They, they, they're not going to the meeting. Because they're rebels. Actually, oop. That uh, license plate is actually Fiona's. Jim has, for some reason, got Fiona's license plate. Um, get out of the way, Lily. Christ's sake. Most of the people in this game have uh, exclusive license plates. Uh, license plates that do reflect their personality or such. But see, uh, Fiona and Jim not only have the same car, but have the same license plate. It's kind of surprising there, especially in a small town like this. You wouldn't think that would be uh, much of a problem. Anyway, we will head inside. I don't want to keep people waiting too much longer. And we get to show on the road as well. Make Rick Vega, Greenvale Community Center. Greenvale Community Center. Thanks for the redub. And for some reason we do have access to it now, even though no one's actively unlocked the door, at least to our knowledge. They were waiting up so. Maybe the caretaker did it. Kind of an awkward break in music there. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. I'm not some tree in the wind this time either. Oh, that was a tough role. That was a piece of scenery. A bright red tree. <laughs> Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations wishes to speak with you. This is very uh, Twin, Pe Twin Peaks ish. I'm Special Agent Twin Peaks ish. Some of you I can are speak, trust me. Oh, Laura Palmer. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Justice. Do you know my name? Justice. Fortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I asked to have you gathered here so I could share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. It is clearly the science says. Those of you with children, especially of honest age, please guide the children away from the Secondly, you meant to be writing, Thomas. Keep writing. You're not meant to be mentioning that. No, I mentioned Twin Peaks. It's not like you can hear York speak anyway. Thanks to the cool sax. Oh. Oh, I'll get back to it soon. We're introduced to a new character. Carol McLean, the owner and singer. Who's the fashionable lady? That's Carol, Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Yes, we're talking about you, Thomas. Especially careful. 
Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Now back to what I was saying. Uh, speaking of Twin Peaks, which of course is David Lynch, uh, many people have noticed, hey, it's uh, Harry and uh, Michael, many people have noticed uh, Emily's similarity to Naomi Watts, of course, is, well, took place within a David Lynch film. Subtle? Not so much. Good old swearing. Pain for our sins, we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. It didn't rhyme. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. That's better. And uh, thanks for the addition there, uh, Mike. Mike, can I call you Mike? Yeah, yeah, all right. Sure knows how to steal thunder. I mean, he said a lot better than we did. Zach, let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. So we have to talk to, well, everybody uh, before the rest of the game carries on. Uh, we'll talk to George first, he's the closest. Agent Morgan. Here's your chance to get to know some of the townsfolk. Don't let it go to waste. Now, as I've said before, uh, this is a time where we get introduced to, well, pretty much everyone else in the town, minus, I think, one person uh, who gets introduced a little bit later on, but I think going? everyone else Your does. words really made me think about Anna's death again. Oh, how, how sad. How could one do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A uh, tattoo? No, I do, actually. <gasps> but why? Could no, you show it to Thomas. me, please? What? Now? Here? Couldn't be. Yes. Surely. Please. This is vital for our investigation. Well, recapping again. We do believe, at least suspect, that the killer has a tattoo of an upside down peace symbol on their back. Well, maybe we found that killer. <laughs> or maybe not. Now I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... Well... Did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not. What are you saying? That's something, I guess. You want to see that tattoo, Zack? A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. What could G be? Falling through the 80s. <laughs> All right then, York. Uh, we also know that Emily doesn't have a tattoo on her back, which uh, we're not actually speaking to Emily, even though we went on that side of the room. We're speaking to uh, I don't think Harry and Mark. Appreciated it. <laughs> oh, Mr. Stewart, we'll be formal. Mr. Francis York Moore, the purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. He was with all that team? I, I can't hear you. We got somebody singing. But if you, Mr. York, find the right time to chat with me, that is, Mr. Stewart. See? So says Mr. Stewart. I'm not sure how he whispered all that to you. But so that's pretty impressive. You can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Crack the riddle. Not the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. 
We can force you to talk, you know. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Can he even talk? We have heard him speak, but he does tend to speak for uh, Michael more Mr. than anyone else. Pay close attention to the and they ignore George completely. If it was only that easy for us. Small they may be, they still are funds <laughs> and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning, Harry. But don't worry. Me That's Mr. Zach, Stewart. Come on, be formal, York. Oh, we've spoken to them. And we can get a coffee, but uh, can't keep this item anymore. We should clean up our inventory. And we'll just chuck in our toy. Oh, I was about to say toy box, toolbox. Uh, and Emily, she's here. Agent York, are you finished asking questions yet? When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. Oh, that sounds romantic. Well, we've got a lot of other people here. However, their relation to the case, I figure. Kind of still blank looking people. Eyes fixed. Never moving. Ugh, sends shivers up your spine, doesn't it? The rest of the people we need to talk to are located all around the uh, Memorial Theatre, or whatever it's called. Now here's a new guy. He's currently just known as Suspect, but uh, we'll talk to him anyway. Hopefully we'll get to learn his name. So you're the FBI agent, are you? Well, we did kind of say that before, I'm sure. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. He's not even looking York. General. I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. Oh, good for you. Which country is that? So why are you living here? Soldier, this is my hometown. After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. Your little I speech, guess not. you mentioned the raincoat killer. Was that a problem? You imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore. Or a fairy tale. Mm. It's based on actual events that happen in this town. He does it say. Is. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> you kids today don't even know how to ask for something, right? How do you talk to your superior? You come on, he's so in general. If you want to hear more? You come to my office. Well, he literally exudes raw power, Zach. Despite the really. credibility issues, we should give him a visit. <laughs> One thing, though. He calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? Hmm. Suspicious. That, that does open a new place on our map. Uh, it was always there, but now we can officially go there and... Uh, well, that's where we get cars, as we did learn from uh, Bull earlier on. Of course. Plenty. But tell me, Usher, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Anna was the sole reason for living after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. And I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Well, yes, you should. And I'd well, appreciate Well, we have already been there. Too. But don't go too hard on her, okay? I'm guessing that's hinting at uh, doing that earlier to go through the whole Becky slash uh, Delivering Man Q quest. We've already done that, her? and there's not much else you'll get on. done at Anna slash Sally's house. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, oh, wasn't was good it? Advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, but I don't think so at all. You know, People uh... don't understand why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make the world a better place in the future. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. Well, I did not know that. we're literally talking behind his back right now. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. Explains the car. A really big house over by the lake. Uh, you don't actually get Amazing. to go to Usher's house. Um, 
I do wonder. Combination. But you don't get that I don't think he's even marked on the map, game. and maybe you can follow him home. Show it. Something I've never That's actually done. I like best about him. Well, I could have I'm not sure you if he indeed did actually go. I think he's still hospital the whole time. Only you could hear we're talking about you. We're, you know, all of a foot away. Two feet, most. Here's a Polly, and also some Agent Honor. Want to be honorable if we didn't take it? Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. Oh, was it a good play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. Oh, well, it was on our intro. I used to come here often with my husband. God rest his soul. We'd come on the weekend to see the latest play. He'd always pretend to be uninterested. But I could tell he was excited inside. So apparently Polly's husband was bored to death. Guys, really? Thinking about it now. Really, Polly? So what's your favorite play? Oh, well, I like so many. <laughs> There was one in particular, but I can't recall the name anymore. Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something by Shakespeare? Oh, um... Uh, too bad. Nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used to see anyway. Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. He'd go on for hours retelling what the play was about. His eyes were so sparkling, like a happy young boy. I see. So, what's your favorite play? <laughs> oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the hotel. It's just too bad. She could embarrass the toughest of the FBI's interrogators. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zach. Amazing. She didn't really uh, avoid it. She did directly even say that she didn't remember. That is different to avoiding. And I think we can be slightly convinced she doesn't remember. But another suspect here. Another new fact. Roaming Sigourney, nickname the Pot Lady. Not for why you may think. Hey, it's because she carries a pot. My pot is getting cold. You are who? What are you saying? I'm Sigourney. Sigourney. She's not the log lady, by the way. Now, what is the matter? Can you explain? No time for chatting. I need to hurry. My pot is getting colder. Oh. You're useless. Zach, we've met all well, we're doing today, a really good job. Amazing. Oh, it takes the cake so far. We still got a few more people left to meet. Let's talk to Jim. Jim, thanks for your help in the forest. How are Isaac and Isaiah? They're fine. They really seem to love their grandpa. Well, I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. Well, there's not much material world in this town. Which is why she lets me take care of them so often. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. Whoa. Those rumors about that scar of yours do more damage than good around here. It's not that big of a scar. I of the material world, don't I? I have to in order to do my job. But I understand what you mean. I'd think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zack. And, uh, Junior and Raging Bull. Hello again, Agent York. How are you? Good, thanks. And you? Oh, I'm <laughs> no smoking here, York, today. sorry. Well, that's good to hear. Do you have any information that could help me out? Information? Sounds difficult and not my kind of conversation. Anyways, you should come by the gas stand again. 
I'll give you the best service in town. We've already seen it, Gina, and so we were impressed. Tell me, why did she bother coming here? Jack. I've nothing to say to you. I haven't asked you anything yet, Jack. Shut it! I might open up if you introduce me to, I don't know, a Ben Franklin or two. Well, we've already done that. <laughs> and we've already learned all the rest to know from you as well. Oh, my creature. Guess there's always someone like him in every town. Charming, charming. Well, lucky to have you here. Another suspect. Wonder who you could be. Nice pants. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everybody does. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. Unique People name. here call me the gunsmith. Wesley the gunsmith. Gun store owner. Was there something you want to ask me? How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? Oh, it is a deer hunting community. There can't be that many customers. I do a gunsmith work in a shop, too. You got the skill the customers find you. All you need is a network. I hope so. Sorry for the... Blowing my nose there. Well, he has got a submachine gun, but we ain't gonna buy it. You've got quite a selection here. Well, no wonder people come from all around. a great sleep in one day, gun. Customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. Great. I just got back. I see. Well, I'll be sure to visit your store sometime. And I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. The shop will be open again tomorrow. It's usually open from twenty hundred to oh six hundred. See you then. <laughs> it's one of the only stores open late. In fact, one of Two stores that I think is open late. Another guy that we only see a suspect, though we do know his name, it is Nick. The cook for uh, the Angie Diner, nonetheless. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And the first time I we've been actually able to formally introduce right. ourselves to him. Nick Cormack, Diner Owner. I'd like to ask Flesh you questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> Nick, are you hiding something? No, nothing. You sure? I'm Positive. sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. Don't blame me, I'm the type as well. He's a little quiet, don't you think, Olivia? Oh. Can you tell me if you noticed anything strange about Because it runs in the family. Incident? Well, so to speak. I'm not sure if this will be of any help, but... Anything, no matter how small, could be of help. Well, you see, the diner closes when it rains. Ah. Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. Anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused. I did tell you that before, if you've been watching the videos. And came in late, too. It was almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. Come to think of it, that was really strange. Did that legendary monster really kill her? It wasn't a monster. Just a criminal. A criminal I'm going to catch and bring to justice. Justice! We've only got a few more people left to talk to, so... Uh, we'll be winding this episode up quite soon. Uh, what do we have here? We've got a cigarette. Yes, it is actually only just one cigarette, even though it shows a whole packet. And uh, York's the type of person that's hey, no, no smoking here. As we introduced, to, hey York, no smoke, even though there are ashtrays. I guess this is the smoker's corner. And York's smoking the cigarette you just found on the ground, I guess. You bum. What do you mean? Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead, or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? I'm sure she's still an airhead, even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost oh, a pound, the photo she we saw her looked exactly the same. Pain one, and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner, and she'd always have a smile on her face. Even when she's in tears. Fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a loving. 
But they would be smiling right along with Sorry. her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angel smiled with her too. Uh, that's disturbing. Scariest part of the game, folks. Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. A goddess. Where did your cigarette go? That was a short conversation, but I think we might have learned a little bit there. At least are there relationships with the other woman in town. More Agent Honor. Uh, three more people to talk to. We'll talk to Quint and Richard first. As they so are close to my way around, okay? Yes, pretty much. Well, we've found everything so far, other than the new places yet to be open. Equal problems, huh? I thought city folks were used to things like that. There's lots more people in the city than there are here. Well, that's true. But I started simplifying things a bit. Here's my new way of thinking. It's simple, really. There's only three types of people. Criminals, victims, and investigators. Everyone else are just vegetables. Vegetables called other people. You really are. Does that make four types of people? No, I guess those people in there are vegetables. Quint, you're here too. I didn't think you were the town meeting kind of guy. A friend of mine was killed, you know, man? I'm not letting this one go quietly. I'll do anything to help you catch the scumbag who did this. Thank you. But vigilance is not justice. Nothing good will come from desiring simple revenge. Oh, come on, I'm not that stupid. But I'm frustrated a bit just thinking that there's nothing I can do about it. We each have a role, a purpose in life, a raison d'etre. Don't forget that. I know, I know. Just don't preach to me. You're sounding like my old man. Zack, wow. I'm in shock like a weasel in an electric chair. He just made it's me realize a, that <coughs> was beginning. Nice on. phrase there, York. And behind us we have a new suspect once again. Good evening, Agent. Brian Insomniac, Gravekeeper. Good evening, Mr. Brian, the Gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian. Mr. Brian, like eh? Retro look. Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie? Ha <laughs> ha. Worthy Honor. one, York. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. Mm. Too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad. So sad. I totally agree. That's why I'm here. Looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Mm. Anna. <laughs> her smile. So warm. Anna. Blonde hair. So bright. Another strange one, York. I'm not sure which one really takes the cake There's after all. graveyard somewhere in town, Zack. I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe we should at least check it out. That uh, might be an idea. At least see where Anna's future resting place is. So I do believe that's everyone? I did think we did have one more person, though. I was reasonably sure of it. But it does seem we have... Did we talk to these two? No, I've got a feeling we didn't. Hey, Lily. Sorry, I don't know how we missed Lily and Agent her. York, your Keith. speech frightened some of us a little. You should work on being more sensitive with words when talking to groups. Really? I tried my best to be gentle. So, have you noticed anything strange or out of place recently? Hmm... Just Becky, really. She works part time at the store. I haven't seen her She's at the meeting. Strange recently. Strange? How? I took the boys along to visit her house today. I was just worried, you know, because she hasn't come into work at all after that incident. Yeah, we noticed she, she wasn't took keen the boys on. boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. <laughs> I just couldn't understand it. Now that's interesting. Thank you, Lily. 
Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zack. Sounds like a plan. I mean, she isn't here after all. And this should be the last guy. You were rocking it large up there. Was I? Oh, thanks. I haven't been on stage like that since elementary school. You made you me play think, a tree, right? man, like, things are <clears> going <throat> like this. We need, like, some action or something. I was pretty psyched up, you know, before you got on stage. I was like, dude, a real psycho in town. Pretty sweet gig. <laughs> but now, I mean, dude, that lunatic could be any one of us, man. I don't want to think of that whack job coming after my family. Makes me shudder all over, man. It was way too heavy. You'll catch him, right, FBI? Of course. But you need to be able to take care of those you love, too. You're right, man. Right on the level. I need to do what's right for my family, man. You lit my soul, man. Thanks, FBI. Keep working it out, Keith. And that's it. We're done here. Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Let's go outside. Back into the room? Oh, great. They all go. And it's the end of another chapter. So again, uh, we'll see you next time on Let's Play Deadly Premonition. Bye for now, folks.